Okay, Wagwan. It's Mr. Garth Reed here. All right, and we're going to be looking at a Cape integrated mathematics question. Okay, we're focusing on module one, that's foundations of mathematics. All right, now in the list of topics that CXC sent out, it stated that logarithms and exponents, right? is a topic that you will be tested on in your examination. And I find out that many students have difficulty with logarithms, especially, all right? So I just want to focus today on the common errors that we have seen students make in the examination, all right? In the Cape Integrated Mathematics examination, okay? Now, before I get started, please ensure to like the video, right? And please do not forget to comment down below once we are finished, okay? Let us begin. So I created this question for you, all right? Some of them are true, some of them are false. So it says state whether the following statements are true or false, all right? So we're looking at true or false logarithm type questions. And you say I put in red, know your rules, all right? You have to know your rules, okay? And I think based off your syllabus, I think you only deal with logs to base 10 and LN, all right? So that is what we'll be focusing on. Yes, so it says state whether the following statements are true or false. Number one says, or part one says, log A plus B is equal to log A plus log B, all right? I'm going to write the answer in red. Now let's look at it. You have log A plus B equals log A plus log B. Is that true or is it false? All right, that is the question. Is it true or is it false? What do you think? Well, if you said that it was true, then you are absolutely incorrect all right this is a false statement okay false there is no such rule in logarithms that says that is true all right so if you had that in your mind please take it out okay there's no rule that says that okay good so part one is now completed all right, let us now look at part two. The negative of the logarithm of A over B is equal to log of B over A. All right, let's look at it now. What do you think? Well, if you said that the answer is true, then you are absolutely correct. All right, the answer is indeed true, all right? Now for students who might not think that it is true or don't know why the reason it is true, I just, just go through it for them, all right? So yeah, I have the, the negative, let me do it in blue here. I have the negative log of A over B, all right? Now there's a rule that says, if I have a number in front of the log here, which is actually a negative one here, right? That's actually a negative one. The rule says I can bring that number up here as a power. So I will now have log A over B raised to the power of negative one, okay? And that is now equal to the logarithm of, now A over B raised to the power of negative one means that you're gonna have one divided by A over B, right? So just recall your indices here. Let me write it here for you in blue, all right? All right, let me, let me do it in green for you. If I have the log of A, Right, if I have the log of A and I have N 
has a number in front that can be written as the log of a to the power of n, right? So that is the reason why I could carry the negative one up as a power. Good. And there's a rule in indices or a rule in exponents which says that if I have a fraction, right? Let's say a divided by b, and I'm raising it to the power of minus n, then that is going to be equal to, you flip the fraction, right? So you're gonna get b over a, okay? Raised to the power of n, all right? So following that rule, I could write this as the logarithm of one divided by a over b can be written now as b over a, all right? The power here was negative one, which represents the minus n here that you see, right? And we flip it, so it's b over a raised to the power n, right? n here is a positive one now, right? So b over a raised to the power one. But, but you know that we don't really write the, the power one here, all right? So I hope that was clear enough. Okay, so as a matter of fact, you don't even need to sh necessarily show this step. All right. So let me just go over it one more time. All right, if you have A over B raised to a minus N, right, minus one in this case, you flip the fraction, so it's B over A, right, raised to the power of N, right? So you're just changing negative one into a positive one here. Right, but remember that we'll have the log in front. Okay, good. So that is the reason why this statement was indeed true. Okay, so we are now finished with part two. Let us now look at part three. The logarithm of AB raised to the N is equal to N log AB, right? So look at it carefully. And what do you think? Is it true or is it false? Is it true or is it false? We know that if you have something being raised to a power, you can carry it on the power, right? So it must be true, right? Well, if you were to say that it is true, then you are absolutely incorrect. This is a false statement, okay? Why is it false? Is it, it is false because the AB here would have to be raised, all raised to the power of N in order for this statement to be true, right? So if you have A times B raised to the power of N, only then I can say it is equal to N log of AB, but that is not the case. The case here is that only B is being raised to the power of N, right? So that is the reason why I can say it is false. Yes, so that is the reason why I can say it is false, okay? So we are now finished with part three. Let's come over here now to part four. It says log A minus log B equals log A divided by log B, right? What do you think now? So let's just come over here now. Yes, so what do you think? Is that statement true or is this statement false? Well, if you were to say that this statement is true, then you are absolutely incorrect. This is a false statement, all right? And this is a common error that we have seen in the CAPE examinations. It's so common, right? Students think that, okay, I know that when I am subtracting two logs, I'm dividing, right? But I'm not dividing the logs like that. I'm dividing the arguments. So it's supposed to be, the actual rule says that if you have the log of A minus the log of B, then that is equal to the log of A divided by B, 
Okay? That is a true statement. That is what the actual rule says. All right? So please ensure that you know your rules. Okay, so that is a false statement. Good. Let us now move to part five now. Okay, part five here. It says that the logarithm of A divided by B times C is equal to log A minus log B minus log C. What do you think? I know that when I'm, when I'm dividing two logs, I'm subtracting, right? That must be true, right? Well, if you were to say that this statement is true, then you are absolutely correct. This is a true statement, all right? So if you need more clarification, let me just come down here, all right? So I'm gonna write it in black here. So what we have is the logarithm of A divided by B times C, right? Okay, the rule says if I'm dividing two logs, if I'm dividing the argument of the log, sorry, it means that I am subtracting the two logs, right? So it's gonna be the logarithm of the numerator A minus the logarithm of the denominator B times C, okay? Good. Now, we can write this now as the logarithm of A minus the logarithm of B times C. Now, there's a rule which says if I have the log of A times B, then that can be written as the logarithm of A plus the logarithm of B, right? So I can say that the logarithm of B times C is the logarithm of B plus the logarithm, the logarithm of B plus the logarithm of C, okay? Now, is that correct? What I have just written, is that correct? No, it is not correct because remember that there's a negative sign here. This is also a common error. Right, there's a negative sign here. So if I have a negative sign there, it means that I have to put brackets here. Why? Because the negative sign will affect each term inside of the bracket. Okay? So I can now simplify this now as the logarithm of A minus, by distributing the negative sign inside the brackets, I get the negative log B minus log B. C, all right? And that is the logarithm of A divided by B times C. Now you see the reason why it is really a true statement, okay? So we're finished with part five of the question. Part six now says that the logarithm of A minus B is equal to the logarithm of A minus the logarithm of b. This is interesting. What do you think? Is it true or is it false? What do you think? Well, if you were to say that this is a true statement, then you are absolutely incorrect. This is a false statement, okay? Remember that if I have the log of A minus the log of B, we know it is supposed to be equal to the logarithm of A divided by B, right? So there's no rule in logarithms that says this statement is true, okay? So it is a false statement. Good. Just look at the last question now, part seven. It says that the ln of e raised to the power of n is equal to n, all right? This one is very interesting. What do you think? Is it true or is it false? What do you think? Because we know when we have something being raised to a power, we can carry down the power, right? So I can say the logarithm, oh, I have ln, so let me change it to ln, all right? 
LNE raised the power of N. We know when we have something raised to the power of N in logs, we carry down the power N, right? And we write back the LNE here, okay? We know that this is true, right? And this is equal to the ln of e, we know ln of e has a value of one, right? You can put that in a calculator. The ln of e has a value of one and n times one will give us n, which is equal to n, right? So this is true, right? That is true. Well, if you were to say that this statement is true, then you are absolutely incorrect. This is a false statement, right? Because this is not true. Okay, not true. Why is it not true? Okay, let us look at it. I have the LN, let me put it in black here. I have the LN of E being raised to a power of N. Okay, now LN E has a value of one. Okay, so I have one being raised to the power of N. All right. Now, one raised to the power n is equal to one. Why? Because if you put one raised to any power at all, you will always get back one. It doesn't matter if it's zero, positive, or a negative number, right? You will always get one as your answer. Good. So that is the reason why that statement there is indeed false. All right, so we have now finished all the questions that I have prepared for you, okay? So that is it for today. Know your rules, please. Before you go into the examination, please recall your rules correctly, okay? Good. And don't forget to like up the video and also comment down below, all right? I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.